Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on August 4th, 2021. Um, as always, uh, just uh, an amazing amount of stuff happening with the Biden administration and almost none of it good. Uh, but before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Ever. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. <clears throat> so let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, probably one of the most substantive um, items of the day is this eviction apocalypse that appears to be now upon us. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, as always, this is a property rights calamity that is brought to you by an unprincipled government. Um, you know, it, it, the government decided at the beginning of this whole pandemic uh, that they, they it was appropriate to shut people, lock people into their houses. And of course, then people can't work. So uh, then, well, gee, how are we going to solve that? Well, I guess we're going to have to uh, tell people that they don't have to pay rent anymore. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. not a matter of the government providing housing. It's a matter of government stealing housing from yeah. landlords and just yes. handing it, uh, trying to look like they're handing it philanthropically to uh people and it's just a, a terrible story about uh, property rights that were destroyed by government and now we're in the mess of it um, and, and we have an article too we have a couple of articles this uh this one is from the i believe it's uh <clears throat> it's from the guardian and uh, it shows here in california uh, protesters out there uh talking about it and um then there was also uh, uh, a nice article as well from fee uh where uh you've got some uh, uh guys like uh rand paul weighing in on it uh, excuse me there was a, a nice little uh where did that tweet go there it is uh and uh here he says cdc does not have the authority to do this this is what he tweeted out i guess when uh when it first happened back in September 2020, Rand Paul once again was on the right side of things and uh, looks like uh, Thomas Massey too. Um, and they said, this is a dangerous precedent and bad policy. So uh, what, what do you guys have to weigh in on this? I mean, just an awful story. It's gonna be ugly going through and landlords have been in an awful situation for about a year. And I don't know, where's it going? You know, you know, it, it, is, it is, really, is really kind of funny, you know, that you, you're beginning to wonder if we are still living in a in a constitutional republic, because the constitution the constitution clearly forbids Congress or any governmental agency from interfering with the obligations of contracts. It's there in the constitution. Besides, also this is an issue of property rights, which also gets into the issue of the taking clause, where government is taking people's property without just compensation. Because when you really sit down and think about it, if you say telling people they don't have to pay rent and their landlord is still stuck with the property, which he, he must also pay the mortgage on, you're actually taking his property. That's what you're doing. So then on two grounds, on two grounds, I think this is totally unconstitutional what they are doing. And it's going to be a nightmare. But that article that you sent out, Jason, you listen to it and you read through it, it's nothing but socialism repackaged. Oh, if we evict all these people, we're oh, and yeah, just policy. to be clear, too, you're talking about the Guardian article, not the fee article. Yeah, you're right. There's a Guardian article. <laughs> yeah. The Guardian article. It's true. It's true. Let's be clear. Yeah. Oh, all these deaths and all these infections is going to rise if people are evicted. What do you mean by that? We have a free market where these things will be resolved in the free market. And <laughs> government should stay out of it and allow people to resolve these things. It's as our economy of voluntary exchange. They have they uh, a tenant wants something which is your rental space. You can provide it. Voluntary interaction. Where does the government enter into this, other than creating the mess that they have already created? Yeah, heck with that. Uh, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. What what uh, what's next? <laughs> you know. Yeah, what's next? That's a good point. Uh, you know, yes. they, <clears throat> What in the heck is next? Uh, and then, uh, of course, for the CDC to be uh, unilaterally, uh, you know, just 
doing doing that. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of wondering how can this possibly happen? Seriously, I mean, I thought I thought you know I was raised that it's the Constitution was the rule of law, the law of yeah. the land, yeah, law the supreme of law of the land, the supreme, supreme. law of the land. Yeah. Supreme trumps uh, you know some CDC of, official uh, coming out with an edict and and so on and so forth, and uh, how these uh, landlords are not able to uh, sue, <laughs> sue City Hall, I guess, sue the government. Uh, and get get all their lost uh, income back, uh, you know, all, all this stuff. I mean, it's just a nightmare, dystopian nightmare. Yes. I, I don't know where it's going or how it got here. Uh, it's completely ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, what, what's next? They just, I mean, heck, if they can take a house from somebody that owns it, what else? You know, they can take anything. Sure. Why don't they come and get my car, you know? I mean, maybe it pollutes too much. Why don't they just come and seize it and melt it down and turn it into a, you know, a electric uh, car or something, you know? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, well, I'm but, you know, but, 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 but this But you raise, you raise an interesting point, you know, Tim, because what if they decide, well, climate change is an existential threat? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, that's what if next. they did that? Oh, then they sure. can do anything. They can do yes. anything. Anything in the name of climate change is an existential <clears throat> threat. So we, you, if you're polluting or if you're doing anything, they can do anything in, in the name of that. If if these things, if these things are permitted to stand, whether it's, it stand in violation of the taking clause, or it stands in violation of even some of the due process issues, it stands whether it's about obligation of contracts, then they can define anything as a threat, anything as a national <laughs> crisis, and they can come and take our property, and our property rights truly mean nothing, nothing. Well, it, I, I, it, it would be uh, just one last point, it, just to be you know kind of pithy about it. If they may as well, I mean, to be honest about it, they may as well take the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and you know Declaration all out of their hermetically sealed containers and just burn them on the yeah. steps of the White House and, you know, wherever else they want to burn them. Just, just burn them. Just, you know, instead of this nonsense, this lie that, oh, we're governed by the rule of law, it's complete baloney, um, yeah. you know, so, <laughs> which, is, which is not, not very um, uh, hopeful. Yeah. Well, I think both of you guys brought up, like, great points. I mean, Tim, the idea that, you know, if the government can just come and take your house, essentially, uh, uh, out of some kind of uh, philanthropic exercise, uh, supposedly. I mean, it, and, and to be clear, there's nothing philanthropic about reaching into somebody else's pocket to virtue signal how magnanimous you are in helping someone right. else. I mean, it's yeah. reaching into your own pocket <laughs> that shows yeah. that you're willing to take the opportunity cost of of your feelings and your, your virtues. So that is the, the truly... Uh, a moral path, but yeah, they, 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 aren't they? They're picking winners and losers, and the government's real good at picking winners and losers. The um, the Federal Reserve and Keynesian economics picks uh, winners out of people that spend and go into debt, and right. creates losers out of people that save money. And right. uh, you know, so so they're so good at picking winners and losers. <laughs> you know, that they're going to pick winners and losers in this uh, this stuff about alternative uh, energy and everything else. So sure. I mean, why not pick winners and losers when it comes to tenants versus landlords? You know, that's the good they're good at. In other words, they're good at bossing people around. <laughs> the number one job, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, Leon, there, there was a good point you made too, in in the. Uh, uh, this is almost a preview of potential where the left could go with climate change, because sure. clearly on something where there's maybe a a one percent chance of death, maybe if, if we want to, you know, more or less. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're saying that they can grab your property, that they can force things into your body. Um, th th these are are absolute violations of property rights of individuals. Sure. And the idea that they're willing to do that over something that, <clears throat> in many cases, uh, this is something that you can uh, protect yourself from with your own, you know, uh, it, I guess uh, the, the way you associate with people. Uh, we now have a choice of a vaccine where you can get that vaccine if you want to. 
And the idea that the government is just going to roll over people and tell you, no, we're, we're going to take your property and we're going to force things into you. This is, uh, you know, so so when you talk about something that existential, uh, you know, which is a word that's been thrown around a lot with climate change, yes. uh, it's it's is scary where these people may go with that. You know, and you think about it, they always do things in the name of the poor. Oh my goodness gracious. You know, well, in this in in, in, in the um in the Guardian articles is the landlords versus the tenants. You know, like the landlords are these people, these these mean bastards just out there. Could I say that word by the way? Well, you yeah, already did. So, yeah, just yeah. go with it. <laughs> yeah, these 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 mean SOBs just out there trying to trying to rip off everybody that come along. And they and like they like they forget we're supposed to be living in a in a in a, in a country where voluntary exchange is paramount, but they always want to do things in the name of the poor. Now look, I have great sympathy and empathy for the poor, and whenever I can reach into my own pocket and help the poor, certainly I'd be willing to do that. But when the government comes along and say, "Well, they, they're forcing me, right?" As if I'm a I'm a landlord, they are forcing me to help the poor. That is not that is not compassion. Okay, I am put at the, at the force of law. I'm required to give people property. That is not right. There's something wrong with that, both constitutionally, legally, and morally. There's something wrong with that. And they keep doing these things in the name of the poor. No, we can't do this. Man, this you're wrong. just a you're just a fatherless rich guy with deep pockets. <laughs> Notice how I said fatherless instead of the B word. Okay. Well, you, you know what's also is, is just terrible and immoral and all this stuff is that the idea that these leaders who are making these proclamations aren't following their own rules. And so here, I mean, we, we've had case after case of this happening throughout the pandemic, and the latest of which is Muriel Bowser, the uh, mayor of uh, Washington, D.C., has just uh, imposed mask mandates on her population. We're seeing similar uh, and more, uh, I guess, uh, just today, I believe, de Blasio uh, may be trying to push forth a vaccine mandate in his system. Yes. But, but at least uh, it, it, at least at the time we were putting together the show, Muriel Bowser uh, throwing the mask mandate was, you know, one of the more uh, heavy-handed things. And the crazy thing is, right when she's going to do it, she goes and she hangs out with all of her friends and celebrities and no mask. Here's a picture of Mariel Bowser in uh, yes. the New York Post hanging out with uh, Dave Chappelle and a bunch of other uh, of her friends and partiers here. And then uh, she also went to a wedding, too, after the mask mandate. When she and she was officiating she was officiating exactly. at a wedding. She and was no mask again. <laughs> Yes. So, I mean, you know, the hypocrisy just abounds. These people uh, want to run your life. They want to, as Tim said, they want to tell you what to do. And then they don't follow the same rules. Uh, and it clearly, you know, we're not being governed by any kind of a system of, of principled laws at this point. It is completely uh, uh, the personality of leaders. You know, people thought they you know, the left was uh, completely upside down with Trump. And yet we see these leaders on the left just roll over people, individuals uh, in city after city and state after state uh, with no regard to uh, sticking to the same rules that they are imposing on the on the people they govern. Uh, Gosh, it's, it's, it's almost as if they have no principles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Who, who, who Almost. would have thought? Who would have thought that? You know, <laughs> you know, you know. But but you know, Muriel Bowser, um, DC, the mayor of DC. She is just in a long line of these people, long line of these people who think they could pass laws and mandates upon us, but they don't have to live by it. Nancy Pelosi during the during the shutdown. Oh, she just needed to get her hair blown out. Oh, I just needed to have this done. Oh, really? She went and do it. The, the the governor of 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 um of uh, New Mexico, she asked mm -hmm. a jewelry store to open up so she could have some jewelry. She did that too, and now we have Muriel. Poor Muriel, she had to go to an officiate. Okay, fine, you want to officiate, you want to pass your mandate, but you're not going to live by the rule too. What the hell is this? So we are just little minions. We just have to pay our taxes and shut up. And you, you, you people in charge could do whatever the hell you want. No, thank you. I don't want to live in that country. I really don't. Yeah, well, that's what they want. <laughs> I guess. I guess. 
Well, aside from them being unprincipled, it's almost as if they don't take seriously what they're talking about either. It's like the, the threat that they claim we're all under, uh, they don't appear to think it's that big of a deal. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> they're they're right. They, they, yeah. they can be well, right about a couple of things, and that's one yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's clear when they're showing that their own skin is in the game, they apparently don't think masks are necessary, you right. know, which is, uh, you know, it's, you know, why, why are they not being canceled in social media right now when everybody else is being canceled? Yeah, so. uh, who, who just ask skeptical questions. These people are literally putting forward orders and then just violating them. Uh, well, if anybody should know, it should be them. <laughs> them. If, 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 if they say they have science that back them up, then they should know. They should know the dangers of doing this. We had Gavin Newsom going to, oh, that illustrious restaurant, the French Laundry, so he can wine and dine with his friends. And then you want to have mandates about how much people could gather and blah, 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 and everything else. And these people are the people who are supposed to be leading us. There's something wrong here, something that stinks to high, high heaven. <coughs> well, and that, that, that's a great segue to our next spot, too, about just other terrible leaders around the country who are in trouble, uh, and, and namely which uh, uh, Gavin Newsom with his uh, uh, recall that's happening here in California right now. And yeah. um, and, and as we just found out last night uh, or yesterday, uh, uh, oh, uh, gosh, Cuomo in, in New York now <laughs> is, uh, is uh, about to be bounced out of there as well. Uh, but, you know, with him, it'll be... Uh, um, on an impeachment, I believe, you know, is how they'll they'll carry him out. Whereas yeah. with uh, Gavin Newsom, this is a voter action that's happening right now. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's uh, absolutely crazy, you know, uh, some of the stuff that's happening and the hypocrisy of these people. Uh, you know, Gavin Newsom. Uh, one of the uh, issues uh, is that recently he he came out and he said that he was uh, blaming the right wing for misinformation on Delta variant deaths for not getting people not getting vaccinated, and. And I, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of misinformation going on all over the place. Uh, but this thing has become so highly politicized, and it's amazing how these people can only see uh, one side of the coin. And, and that's a picture of Gavin Newsom there, in case you haven't, uh, yeah. you're not aware. Uh, but <laughs> if if we look at uh, an article that happened, and this is uh, from Politico, uh, during the election, Kamala Harris. Here's the uh, headline in Politico. Yes. Uh, Harris says she wouldn't trust Trump on any vaccine released before the election. So, you know, here Gavin Newsom is blaming uh, uh, conservative voters when clearly the, the, the second in command in his party uh, and likely to be the president in the next four years, uh, sure. as Biden probably won't make it through his whole term, um, you know, here Kamala is. Uh, essentially uh, being a vaccine denier and putting the country at risk by saying, you know, hey, don't take the vaccine or, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't is what she's saying. Uh, you know, I, how terrible. And it just shows it's, it's so politicized. You know, I mean, everybody is it's we're in such a dangerous place where we literally just cannot trust uh, any of the information that's coming from anywhere. Do you guys have any thoughts on I'm I'm just I'm just motivated to root for Biden's good mental health with the thought of Harris <laughs> right behind, just just uh, one more slurred speech away from the White House or the you know the Oval Office. You know, <laughs> I, 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 are you done, Tim? Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Oh, okay. But you know. You have to wonder how this woman became vice president of the United States of okay, truly, you know? You have to wonder, okay? This woman said, I think it was during the debate, she said that, oh, if Donald Trump said the vaccine is good, blah, 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 she's not going to take it, she's not going to trust it, whatever she said, something along those lines. So what was she really saying? Is she thinking that Donald Trump has a little lab at the bottom of the White House and he was developing the vaccine and that is what he was going to put out for us? To put into our bodies? Is that what she was thinking? This woman is a is a damn idiot to start with. And now we have Gavin, Gavin Newsom want to pile on on the idiocy. Oh, all this misinformation is out there. And it's all this misinformation that's causing people to die. And all this misinformation causing people to, to be infected. Really, Gavin? You're going to be an idiot like Kamala. I guess all the same party. So maybe I, I, shouldn't, I should not be surprised. But the point about all this is something more deep deeper than this you know jason and, and, and tim really and truly what we have going on here what we have going on here is the government 
and big tech joining together to tell us what information we should receive. That is what is going on here. That is a big problem. Kamala's idiocy is not a problem, as far as I'm concerned. We're going to get her out of office eventually. Gavin Newsom idiocy is not a problem. Hopefully, we'll get him out of office in September. But the big problem that we are facing right now is this joining together of government and big tech. And, and they are using this to censor us. This is a road to fascism. And we better be damn careful about these people and their actions. Uh, almost as careful as if they confiscated our uh, our uh, real estate, our rental real estate from us. You know. <laughs> you see, you see, you, uh, Tim. That's a wonderful tie-in. Okay, that's a beautiful tie-in. You know why it is? Look at what the government is doing to us. We're supposed to be in a constitutional republic, and look at what they are doing. Okay, look at what they are doing. How they are violating our freedoms and our liberties, all in the name of Oh, the pandemic, we have to lock down. Oh, oh, the pandemic, oh, um, well, we have to care about the tenants. So we have to violate the rights of and liberties of property owners with landlords. And next thing is going to be climate change. Oh, we have to violate your rights too, because we think this is an existential threat. So we're going to take care of the people and we're going to take care of you. Yeah, thank you. Go take care of someone else, please. Well, your grocery, you're going to have to put a big old basket in the back end of your bicycle when you go to the grocery store. Uh, me too. You know, I'm going to get a lot of exercise riding that bike to the grocery store. Because I don't want to pollute. It'll be a law. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna seize my car and melt it down, Tim? Is they're that gonna, what you're trying yeah, to tell me? They're going to seize your car and they're going to give you a bicycle. And they're all going to be the same. They're going to be one-speed bicycles with those big old handlebars and a little cha-ching, cha-ching next to it. And uh, that's what we're going to have. And a big giant basket fore and aft so that we can uh, go to the grocery store and get our uh, groceries. Uh, and one, that's only once a week, though, by the way. <laughs> so, so damn, I better, I better don't have any needs in the interim. Okay, I'm right. shit on oh. Oh I'm no, over. you better not. I'm out of luck. I'm out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, one point I want to drive home with this too, though, is it's important to remember this, especially uh, you know, as this is, you know, for the most part a libertarian type show. But the the uh you know, it wasn't the uh Democrats who were in power, you know, at least in the White House when all of this stuff happened. It was Donald Trump and yes. Republicans. And the fact that you know he allowed a lockdown to occur. And the fact that he also signed on to of uh, eviction moratoriums yes. as well. It's true he was not nearly as enthusiastic as Democrats were about <laughs> it. But the bottom line is, I, I guess, if you're watching this and you are at all dismayed about where we're at, um, you know, it, I wouldn't look to, you know, one of the main two parties for a solution here, right? Because this is literally how we got here. You know, it's, it's time to look to alternatives. And, I, you know, hopefully... Uh, you know, if you're looking out there and you're dismayed, maybe you'll give the Libertarian Party a fresh look because, you know, <laughs> clearly this uh, the, the people who were handling government during all this, this is about as big of a disaster as we could possibly have this whole COVID lockdown mess and uh, eviction moratoriums. And we're not out of it. I mean, we, we're going forward. Fight, you know, we're going to go deeper into this over the next few years as, as we try and untangle all these property rights that have been just destroyed. So. Yeah. But and that and that you know that's a very valid point you're making, Jason. Very, very, very valid about 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 Republican <laughs> this thing started under Trump. But the fact and the fact of the matter is both parties are doing this. And it seems to me these days the, the message of the Republicans are vote for me, we'll spend less than the and the Democrats. That's that, that's not a good message as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh it's about that time in our show to jump to our uh, knucklehead noise patrol and uh, there's the sound of our knucklehead noise patrol and in this uh, particular um, uh, item that we have this week uh, in the knucklehead noise patrol is something silly at the end of the show that some politician has said uh, well uh, recently Saki was trying to Jen Saki the uh, uh, the uh, White House press secretary um, she was uh, uh, trying to 
divine a reason for the change in direction of the CDC on masks. And uh, it, she couldn't really come up with one. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just she sort of stumbled her way through it. And it wound up being something on the order of I told you uh, just because we told you. Uh, yeah. So essentially, uh, Saki uh, was responding to Peter Ducey at the White House. Um, and uh, when he asked about this new change in direction, and she says, because the public health leaders in our administration have made the determination based on data. Of course, she wasn't really sharing that with anybody, but based on data. Uh, uh, that is a way to make sure they are protected, their loved ones are protected, and that's an extra step uh, given the transmissibility of the virus. Well, if you're vaccinated, then you're not really going to give the virus to, to somebody else. I mean, that's exactly. the whole point of the vaccination. Is. Yeah. So if the vaccination works for you, then yeah. you have very little chance of, of spreading it to somebody else. So, I mean, the, the uh, uh, insanity is, is just... Uh, a, it's just crazy. And, and uh, this uh, other article here uh, just demonstrates this was earlier this year. CDC says fully vaccinated people don't need to wear masks indoors or outdoors in most settings. So, I mean, there, there you go. I mean, there's there's just a few months ago. And here again, you know, mask mania. They just keep changing their advice on masks over and over again. You guys got any thoughts on this? Well, I, I, you know, I've, I've heard uh, that the um, uh vaccinated can uh, apparently spread the the virus from from them to somebody that's uh unvaccinated and or even vaccinated as far as i guess i've heard that i don't know how true that is but uh so there's that scuttlebutt going around so i mean you know you might say <laughs> number one you know that you could um you could recommend some secondary uh um uh, <laughs> some secondary uh, means of trying to prevent the transmission of the virus. But masks have, have proven not, not to be uh, at least so many different studies, uh, none that you'll see uh, in the mainstream media, apparently, or uh, from, coming from the official government sources, but, but from other governments and other studies that uh, have been independent and totally legit, not to mention this comparison between states like Florida and states like uh, California. Well, Tim, that's have... just because those studies didn't use three masks as Fauci. Yes, <laughs> 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 that, that's, that's very likely. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, to, just just to wear one of these, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm, we're out of time. Leon, what do you think? The, um, the, the, this this idiocy is beyond belief. Okay, Timmy, you're right. It is possible. It is possible to um, for a vaccinated person to transmit because the vaccine is not 100 percent effective, but the risk is minimal, minimal, minimal. But these idiots want to take that and use that to violate our freedoms and our liberties. That is what they're trying to do here. Just because of that minimal, minimal risk of transmission, because of the 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 the, the, um, the effectiveness of the vaccine is not 100 percent. But the, va the vaccine is, is 95, 96% effective. So the chance of a, a vaccinated person transmitting, getting infected and transmitting is minimal. And when I say minimal, I mean minimal beyond minimal. Well, and anyway. we are risking our, uh, the wrath of our editors right now, uh, <laughs> having to edit out too much of the show because we've gone over time. Uh, so thanks for so much.